frontier is defined as uncharted territory by land or notion. Those who chart that territory tell a story. The past illustrates the blueprint for the present. How things are and how they've evolved. From land to water, we are challenged to border that new frontier. A frontier the outdoorsman knows like no other. Author Gary Lewis works his way along that edge of where discoveries, failures, and achievements have written the story of the sportsman. Yes! Yes! From state to state, continent to continent, the stories told create the foundation of the present and they lay the framework for the future. Through the muzzle fire and on the stone are stories from the edge. Water is the most important thing as far as Indians are concerned, because that's, that's life. The past is written, the present is here, and this is Frontier Unlimited. This trip was a scouting mission to check out a new hunting lodge carved out of the mesquite forest south of San Antonio, south of the Alamo. Jeff Griffith is building a bow hunting only operation for hunters who chase deer. Have yeah, this, is your destination. this is it. We found it. And hogs with archery tackle. We are at the gate. Motorcycle rider. This has uh, always been a dream of mine. And from Maurice Chambers has kind of helped me get started in it. Run across the 300 acres and try to start a bow hunting operation. Uh, whitetails, exotics, hogs, boars, various horn horned goats, all that. I will push it for him to be here. Didn't find a book, but I've got to uh, talk to Maurice. Hunter Arts, a native of Texas, and a hunting consultant and hunting property manager is an ardent student of all things wild boar. You know, the only way to really control them is uh, harvesting. In my opinion, that's what I think. I don't like the poisoning thing at all. I don't, I'm not a fan of that. I just don't, I don't like it. I've got a trail camera here. I'm gonna set it up. I'm gonna leave it for probably a couple days. Sweet little camera. I'm just learning how to use it right now. Climb in here? Yep. And then you'll come back and pick us up at dark? Or? Yep. Okay. Sounds good. This is all right. This is all right. I don't get to hunt and stand very often like this. This is wild boar country here in this part of South Texas. There's a lot of pigs here. Texans tell me there's a lot of pigs right here. And not only pigs, but rattlesnakes. Next two days, we're gonna sit here in this blind, and probably a, another blind, and we're gonna just watch pigs, learn about pigs, and shoot a pig to take home. Lewis really wanted a silver boar or a white boar on this hunt. These are the hardest to find, and they only seem to come out close to dark.
makan. Lewis was hunting with South Texas Bucks and Bows in La Prior, Texas, All right. with owner Jeff Griffiths and hog hunting expert Hunter Arts. Lewis is using a Montana rifle, chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, and topped with a Burris scope. The bullet is a 129 grain Nosler Acubond, long range. These are Mexican tree ducks, and I haven't seen any since I was hunting down by Mazalon a long time ago. And so the first thing we did when we drove in is I looked, we saw these ducks last night sitting up on top of that feeder. And I thought, those look like tree ducks and that's what they are. But right now, they're our confidence decoy. And when we drove in, the ducks flew away. When we came back into the blind, the ducks circled around and they landed on top of that feeder. They're gonna sit there for a while and then one of them's gonna go down and start to feed while the other one watches. And the pigs, the really wary ones, they pay attention to the other wildlife. So these ducks are our confidence decoy. We're here kind of as an exploratory mission. This is a new outfit. Just heard about him from a friend of mine, Jim Foster. And um, he plugged us in. We flew down here. And we're going to see just how many hogs are on this place. On our stands and our feeders, we'll leave them where they're at right now. Uh, we will be moving them around after they get hunted quite a bit. And once the animal knows what's going on at that location, then we'll change it up and maybe even start feeding just the roach. Uh, putting up tripods, uh, pop-up blinds, brush blinds, stuff like that. A hen turkey just walked out of the opening and then back down that little road there. That's the first activity we've had in about an hour. Lewis was hunting with South Texas Bucks and Bows in La Prior, Texas, with owner Jeff Griffiths and hog hunting expert Hunter Arts. It's a Sunday morning. I'm supposed to be in church, and here I am hunting. So, we're not going back to the lodge with a pig. We're going back for breakfast, and then we'll come back out of here. Probably won't get one until after the sun goes down. One pig came in. Just one? Just one. And I heard a pig grunt out there, 
Yeah. But I did that one didn't come in. Didn't come in. Yeah. Dang. Lewis checked the trail camera every morning and was astonished how many times the white pigs showed up after dark, but never came out during daylight hours. We're gonna go put out some uh, sour corn to help draw some hogs in. Man, this stuff stinks. Yeah, it does. They're smelling it right now. They, they got their attention. <laughs> you uh, put corn in a 55 gallon drum and put water in it to sour it, get the smell to attract the hogs in. They love to eat it. It stinks real bad. Where the, the regular corn you don't smell as much as that sour corn, it stinks. This is not what you want to have for lunch. Hunter Arts has studied wild boars for his whole life and admires the animal, both for its sporting quality and its table fare. A guy comes down and uh, wants to do a hunt. What would you advise that guy to do after he's bought his license and got his bow and arrow? shooting the way he wants it. Well, the first thing is he needs to get with the guide and go look at where he's gonna be hunting so the guide can give him some pointers of where the hogs are moving or where all the water sources are. Yeah. Uh, because they're gonna stay, the hotter it is, the more they're gonna stay around water because they don't have sweat glands and they gotta stay cool. Right. So then you got a uh, hog goes into the water. What, what kind of things is that hog gonna do once he gets in there and rolls and coats himself with mud? Yeah, he's gonna come out and find a tree or a, a post, telephone pole, or whatever he can find to rub on. And then that'll leave you a good mark as how, how tall that hog is, how big that hog is. If you look at the mud line on that pole of that tree, you can kind of tell what size hog you're looking at that's hitting that water source. Yeah. And I think a, a person needs to ask themselves, what are they, what are they looking for? Do they want to try to take a meat pig? Or well, I think they got to answer that question for themselves when, um, before they arrive. This is a pretty good setup. We've got um, nice clear shot right through here and this looks like about 90 yards and then we can see for a good distance this direction and uh, little ways this way so we can see like 50 yards this way and about 50 yards that way and the wind is right in our face we got that stinky corn blowing on the breeze so should be good all that water By the end of day two, it was time where Lewis felt he had to shoot something, or risk going home empty-handed. He passed up chances on a dozen pigs, young boars, and dry sows. Those are MR ducks, MR ducks. Confidence ducks. This is so much different than a lot of the other things I do. A lot of times I scout where the animals are going to be and then I go there and then I sit and wait. In this case, somebody else has scouted it. They've prepared everything. They've set up the shooting lanes and they know what these hogs are going to do pretty much. So they've taken all the work out of it for me, that's for sure. And we're not hunting all day, we're hunting in the morning and we're hunting in the evening. I took two naps today. That's pretty nice. Here it 
comes a big one. He's big and black. There it is. another one back there right at the fence corner just sit, just stand in there that's a nice big female she's been in the water she got all cooled down she's having a good day right now okay we got a shooter here maybe with that many females there there's a good chance we'll have a boar soon. There's got to be a boar hanging around. If I was going to take one of these, and I might, I would take the one on the left because it doesn't have any babies. And so you can, you can tell that's the one, that's the first one we saw. It came in without piglets and it's, it's by itself. She must have smelled us. Throughout the hunt, a white fallow buck drifted in and out of the forest like a haunting. It would show up just before dark and then vanish again. Lewis took it as good medicine. Someone would get a chance at a ghost boar. A castle of piglets and three adults appeared out of the mesquite. One was an eligible candidate. Lewis waited until the black one was broadside, with no other animals around it. Twenty yards, no more. In this thick brush like this, you gotta be ready for a second shot. And this pig started to get up, so I shot it again. Because you, you want it down, you don't want to have to go tracking through this thick stuff with all these rattlesnakes. Okay, that's a nice meat pig. That's exactly what we came for. Exactly what we want right there. Throughout the hunt, Lewis had chances at many boars. That evening, he took one. Lewis would give Pike a chance at the ghost boar. Returning to the same blind, Lewis had harvested his boar the night prior. They waited patiently as the last day of the hunt in South Texas came to a close. With thoughts and images of silver-backed boars and an approaching twilight, the question was to leave the blind or to stay in place. With less than an hour left in the hunt, with the sun going down, Lewis and Sam left the blind and looked down the narrow corridor overhung with mesquite and oaks. 
and the gathering dusk, a ghostly figure caught Lewis's eye. Pike's first shot was 61 paces. Although the angle had been good, the bullet placement was just a little off. It was a good reminder a person should always be ready to take a second shot, if necessary. In the open, they admired what may be one of the most beautiful wild boars Lewis has seen. We got the one we came for, and then we were looking for the other one we came for, and this was it. This was it, though. This is the ghost pig, and we've been searching for this one ever since we got here. Preston Cody, a cowboy, pastor, singer, and songwriter, sat on a stool and played while we turned a big wild boar into the raw materials for tacos, carnitas, barbecues, and pork loin feasts. Where there's still pay for a cowboy And a room down at the sunset end Where I don't have to start all over I can just start again I know 